This is a review of the Digital Discovery. It's a new instrument from Digilent that is intended for use on digital signals alone. In other words, it doesn't contain the analog circuitry of the analog discovery that's also manufactured by Digilent. It's intended for embedded systems. It is optimized for low voltage CMOS systems, in other words, 3.3 volt uh, systems. To get started, what I have done is hooked a, a simple real-time clock module. This is actually a module intended for use on a Raspberry Pi. But I've hooked it to the power supply terminals of the digital discovery. I'll turn on the power supply. And you see that the real-time clock is powered up. Obviously, this is a very simple a use for an instrument like this, but it's one of the things that the digital discovery has is the ability to power units like this. This is actually a 3.3 volt sensor module or actually a real-time clock module as I pointed out that uh, is actually intended to be used in experiments with a Raspberry Pi uh, computer. So. With that as the beginning, let me tell you where we're going to be going and then let's get right into it. This is the plan that I intend to try to stick to in reviewing the digital discovery. Previously, I produced a video called An Introduction to the Digital Discovery. And if you haven't watched that video and you would like a kind of overview as well as a little bit of the differences between this and the analog discovery, you might want to watch that video. I'm going to do a little bit of an overview of the digital discovery in a little more depth than that introduction. And then we're going to start working with the various functions that are available. I just showed you a little bit of the use of the supplies, but we'll look at that in the waveform software. We'll also look at static I.O., patterns and protocol, as well as script. But we're primarily going to look at these as a sort of let you know that it's there and, and how to basically use these things. But everything uh, up to and actually to some extent including the logic analyzer is common with the analog discovery. That is, it can also supply voltages. It also has a static I.O. and a patterns generator. It can also do protocol analysis and also generate uh, or allow you to write uh, scripts. The place where the digital discovery differs from the analog discovery is when you get down here to the logic analyzer. And that is because it has a, a different input circuit, a different uh, FPGA, a faster one. It's the same Xilinx family, the Spartan 6, but it's a faster version. And it can handle more, a lot more logic signals. It has three connectors for logic instead of one. And so we'll talk about all of that. But uh, we're going to also do a couple of demonstrations. One is using an A to D converter. And if you watched my logic analyzer comparison video of a year or so ago, where I compared the analog discovery to the Rigol MSO mixed signal oscilloscope, a lot, a lot of what we're going to be doing here is the same thing. That is, it's the same experiment, but now we're extending that to the digital discovery. And we're also going to do a bus analysis, which I also have previously done with the analog discovery. In this case, we're going to analyze an I2C bus. There are many new buses in the latest versions of waveforms. But Waveforms works with both the analog discovery and the digital discovery. So a lot of these things you can do, perhaps not as many bits, perhaps not as fast, but nonetheless you can do with the analog discovery. 
So let's look at some of the differences between the digital life discovery and the analog discovery. The digital discovery is shown on the left and the analog discovery on in the right column. Both of them have the uh, supplies. That is, they, they both generate uh, supplies. The uh, digital discovery, though, does not have the capability of external power supply that the analog discovery 2 has and therefore it can't supply nearly as much current as the analog discovery. Both of them have logic analyzers. The analog discovery is a 16 channel 100 mega sample analyzer. The logic uh, of the digital discovery is 24 channels and 800 mega samples. There's an asterisk here because that uh, means that this 800 milli, uh, mega samples is only with the high-speed adapter and the cables, which are an extra $50. They both will generate patterns, 16 channels, in both cases 100 mega samples per second. But the patterns output of the analog discovery is on the same pins as the logic input. So you can use at most 16 channels. You have to decide or how many you're going to use for input, how many for output, but the total can't exceed 16. The memory in the digital discovery is 256 uh, meg. The, uh, the total number of samples per channel is 32,000. On the analog discovery, the, the memory is only 16K, and basically that is the limit on the number of samples per channel. Both of them now provide protocol analysis. This is a new feature, but it's primarily because it's been added to the waveform software. Either one can, can do that. The, both of them can allow you to write scripts. It's basically the JavaScript uh, format that allows you to control the instrument with a Java-like language. Both of them provide static I.O. Now, the analog discovery provides an analog waveform generator, two channels. The digital does not. Analog does also provide two scopes. The digital discovery does not. Analog discovery provides a voltmeter, which is not in the digital discovery. The, uh, this is an error. There actually is a, a logger in the digital discovery, just as there is in the analog discovery. But there is no network analyzer in the digital discovery because that's basically an, an analog function. And it, it is present for the analog discovery, but not for digital. Similarly, the spectrum analyzer, which is basically an FFT of the scope inputs, is not present in the digital discovery, but it is in the analog discovery. Here is a little more detail of the digital discovery using the latest version of Waveforms. It's called Waveforms 2015, but there's more than one release of Waveforms 2015. So if you have a digital discovery, make sure you have downloaded the latest version. Now, the waveform software will run both the digital discovery and the analog discovery. It will auto sense what you have plugged in. I do not think it will allow you to run both of them at the same time. So if you have both, you may have to run one on one computer and one on the other. In the digital discovery, the supplies allow you to generate from 1.2 to 3.3 volts at 100 milliamps and we'll take a look at that in a minute. The static I.O. allows you to generate 16 channels simulating uh, push buttons, uh, switches, and LEDs as indicators. The script function is like JavaScript, that is it uh, looks like JavaScript, but it is optimized for, or should I say, uh, customized for the control of the various instruments 
in this case the digital discovery. Logic in the digital discovery, as I've already mentioned, is 24 channels of digital logic analysis. It uh, assumes that the voltages on that uh, logic are between 1.2 and 3.3 volts, uh, in other words CMOS, and up to 800 megasamples per second. Now it will work with uh, TTL logic, that is 5 volt logic, although it's not optimized for that, it will sense. I'm not sure whether you can get the very highest speeds though with TTL because they are fudging the uh, the noise margins a little bit in trying to stretch these inputs to use 5 volts. I haven't tested that but uh, it, it might don't assume that the specs apply all the way out to 800 mega samples per second and 100 megahertz of frequency response if you're using TTL. I, I haven't verified that and I can't find anything on the digital site that tells you about that. You can also do various analyses. SPY, I2C, UART, I2S, which by the way is not the same as I2C, uh, and CAN, as well as Parallel Bus. Some of these are new. Uh, I think the CAN uh, decode is new to the latest version of waveforms. You can produce up to 16 channels of pattern generation and you can produce those at the same time that you are analyzing up to 24 channels of digital logic. So for example you can drive uh, 16 patterns, 16 digital signals at the same time you are watching 24 digital channels. Once again the outputs are from 1.2 to 3.3 volt CMOS and the patterns can change at most uh, 100 million times per second, 100 mega samples per second. There also is a trigger that allows you to uh, link up to two I.O. signals. This can be useful for linking more than one instrument, whether it's, for example, if you have the digital discovery and the analog discovery, I think you have to use them on separate computers, but you can link the triggers so that they will be time synchronized. Finally, there is a protocol analyzer, which is a new function in waveforms that allows you to do SPY, I2C, and UART. They may add some more in the future, but right now you're limited to these three. Those are very useful in doing things like these little sensor modules that work with Raspberry Pi and Arduino and at some point uh, I may do a review of the protocol analyzer. I'm going to sort of skip over that in this review because it at this point appears to be optimized for the use of the chip kit that is the the Arduino-like computers that Digilent manufactures, uh, but since it uses a different processor than an Arduino, it is slightly different. And this protocol analyzer, at least the examples that you can use, are for the PMODs, that is the peripheral modules that work with that system. So. I'll put this off until uh, later, though I will mention it as we go through the interface. So having done that, let's take a quick look at the block diagram of the digital discovery and then we'll move over to the waveforms interface. This is a block diagram of the digital discovery. The heart is a Xilinx field programmable gate array. It's a Spartan 6. It has uh, four banks. Bank zero is used for the input output, that is for the data IOs, pins 24 through 39, and for the two triggers. It has level translators to convert the input signals to signals that are 
consistent with the FPGA inputs and outputs. Bank 1 is used for the uh, logic analysis. This is inputs only. Uh, data in 0 through 23. I realize that this shows a two-way, but that's not actually true. These are all inputs. Bank 2 is used for the overall control and basically uh, communicates with your uh, PC using a USB connection. It's a USB 2 connection. The internal oscillator and calibration memory are what allow this to calibrate the FPGA and there is also a power supply and control network. The control network of course works with the FPGA to provide control and also provides internal power for the various banks of the FPGA and finally there is an output uh, called VCCIO, which is a programmable output that allows you to drive external devices like the one I showed at the very beginning of this review. Uh, as I pointed out, there's a PC connection, USB connection to your PC, and finally it uses DDR3 memory for storage. When you open the waveform software, the first thing it does is look to see if you have an instrument connected that it can recognize. If it recognizes that you have a digital discovery connected, it will bring up this interface. This is different from the interface that it brings up for the analog discovery. As we mentioned earlier, you have supplies, logic, patterns, static I.O., protocol analysis, and script. We're going to defer the logic portion to the last half of this review, but right now let's use the supplies and show what that generates. This is the supplies screen. You notice that here it allows you to set the voltage to a variety of voltages down to 1.2 volts, a max of 3.3. You can also set the threshold to anything from 1.42 volts down to 500 millivolts or 580 millivolts. It also provides sliders over here if you want to use them instead of the uh, uh, fill in the, the blank. This turns the voltage on and off and earlier when I was turning on the uh, power to that little uh, real-time clock module, this is what I was doing. Now it's on, that the light would come on on the module. This turns it back off. You can have the drive either be auto or you can specify the, the level of drive signal. You can set the slew to either the quiet mode, the slow mode, or the fast mode. And you can decide whether you want the data inputs to either pull down, pull up, pull to the, or pull to the middle. The default is down. The digital I.O. pulls are all across here and you can set any of them to be an up or a down or you can float them. Now they start out in the float position and basically this is the data I.O. pins from 24 over here to 39 over here. Remember these are the data I.O. pins not the data in pins. Okay now let's look at the patterns interface. The patterns interface I've shown before and it's fairly much the same interface that you get with the analog discovery so I'm not going to go into much detail on that. Basically, you can add channels. You can either add signal channels, you can add bus channels, or you can use what's called ROM logic. I'm going to add one signal on, let's say, DIO 34, and then I'm going to add a bus for, let's suppose, 24 through 
27. And the difference is that the bus is treated as a group when generating patterns. So anything you do to the bus, you do to all four signals in this particular case that are part of the bus, whereas the individual signals uh, operate independently. You can have them be of type constant, that is constant one or constant zero. You can have them be a clock, a pulse, a random, or a custom. And the custom requires that you write some script-like language to control that. For the bus, you notice that in addition to these, you can also have a binary counter bus, a gray counter, a Johnson counter, a walking ones, walking zeros, or a decimal counter. Quite useful being able to do those instead of having to set them up yourself. Once again, I'm not going to go into much detail on the pattern generator because it's common and also there is a, some nice tutorials on the Digilent YouTube channel on using the pattern generator which is essentially identical to the analog discovery pattern generator. Static I.O. allows you to control data I.O. pins and they can be you can make them either LEDs or buttons this is these are the names and these can either be push buttons, they can be on-off switches, that is single pole, single throw switches, or they can be LED indicators of what's going on. They're really intended for use in training environments where you need some kind of easy way to change input signals manually and observe them manually. Once again, this is the same as static I.O. on the analog discovery too. Protocol is a new feature that was added to waveforms in its latest incarnation. This is a really nice way to control things like sensors. So, for example, you can either use a UART protocol, a SPI protocol, or an I2C protocol. Let's use I2C since that's uh, fairly common and a little, little easier to understand than the SPI protocol. You have a clock called S clock. In this case it's set to the DIO 24 pin. You have an, uh, a data pin which is the serial data. It's now set to DIO 25. You set the frequency of the uh, system. Basically it's the clock frequency. And then you can either do a simple, that is, a, a simple write or a simple read, or you can do a custom. A custom is basically a script. They have many examples, for example, finding an I2C device or using the PMOD ACL, which is the uh, PMOD that works with the chip kit system the uh, ADX L345. Let's take a look at that one. And you see basically it's, it is JavaScript-like language that will set up and control uh, this particular ADX L345 module. You can also use the uh, sensor mode and the sensor once again has some examples. For example, the let's in this case use the gyro. This is a gyro that is a sensor for the chip kit modules, very similar to the gyro sensor that's used with Arduino boards. And once again, it's written in this JavaScript type language. Finally, let's look at the script. The script is basically a programming window 
that allows you to control the digital discovery. Once again, you have examples. Here, there is a static I.O. example, which is the one that's shown. It's, it basically writes, you write the script to turn things on and off or to set up particular inputs and outputs in a particular way. It can be very useful. I haven't used the script in this particular uh, digital discovery, so I'm not going to go into much detail on that. But at some point, if I set up some scripts for some particular experiments, I will probably do a video on those. Okay, that is sort of the, the basic beginning. Now let's turn to looking at the logic analyzer, which is this window. Once again, you can add channels on the left. You can set triggers. Let's add a, uh, say, a spy bus. Now we have a spy bus. The select is data in zero. The clock is data in one. And the data is, is data two. Now the data is actually the SDA. This is S clock. And this is what's sometimes called chip select or on some modules reset. You can set triggers here. This is where it actually displays. Above that, you can set the trigger type. You can set the source to either the digital inputs or the pattern output, or you can manually control some uh, signals. You can trigger using the simple trigger. You can do a pulse trigger, which I'll show you later. You can do a protocol trigger. So, for example, since we have an SPI bus, the protocol trigger is already set up to be an SPI protocol. If we had an I2S bus, it would be uh, an I2S protocol. And here is the available sample rates. You notice that we can sample from 200 megahertz all the way up to 800 megahertz. Now understand this is sample rate, not the bandwidth of the input. The input bandwidth is limited to 100 megahertz. So for example, if you are using 200 megahertz on a 100 megahertz signal, you are basically sampling at the Nyquist minimum of two samples per cycle. If, on the other hand, you use 800 megahertz of sampling, then you are oversampling. You are sampling four times faster than the Nyquist minimum. However, you notice that it says down here, not available. The SPI bus will not work at these high rates. Okay. Well, now let's move to some experiments with the logic analyzer.